Hello third grade. Today we are going to take an object, we are going to slide it, flip it, or turn it. And then we are also going to talk about area. So make sure you have your workbook page 261. All right, well, let's take a look at the examples. They have a math book with the title at the top of the book. That's going to help us. That's going to be like a marker so that whenever it, it's done moving, however they're going to move it, we can tell which way it's facing. So looking at the slide, we're going to do that one first. The first thing we need to notice is the dotted line here in the middle. Okay, everything to the left of the dotted line is what it looked like when it started there before anybody did anything to it. The dotted line shows you that that they moved it and then the to the right of the dotted line is showing you what it looks like when they were done moving it. And then you have to figure out what they did to it. Did they slide it? Did they flip it? Did they turn it? Okay, so let's look at the slide. Okay, the book is upright. The title is on the top. And then on this side of the dotted line, they moved it to here. What do you think? They what do you notice? Yes, the title is still at the top. So nothing has changed. It just moved over. So that is what a slide is. Okay, so basically all they did was they took the book and they slid it over that way. Okay, they didn't turn it. Everything else is the same. They also could have slid it up this way and the title would still be at the top. They could have slid it to the left and the title would still be at the top. Or they could have slid it down here. And where do you think the title would be? Yes, at the top. Okay. So let's talk about flipping now. Now a lot of you try to do this with your water bottles so you know what your what a flip is. Okay. So looking at this example. See where the title is to start. What do you notice after the movement? The title is missing. And why is the title missing? Very good, because the book has been flipped upside down. So that is what a flip is. All right, now let's look at the turn. So the title is at the top, just like, you know, the other ones, how they started out. And then... Just like when you're turning a car, you're just going to turn it one way or the other. In this case, they turned it, and whenever there's a turn, usually there's a pivot point, okay? And so they could have turned it on that pivot point so it goes to the right, all right? They also could turn it to the left, where do you think the title would be? It would be up here. Okay. Um, so that's basically it. This is kind of a review for you. So I'm going to ask you to go ahead and figure out one, two, three, and four. For five, six, seven, and eight, you need to write the words and look where I am underlining. Okay, there's a there's the words for you. You're going to write slide, flip, or turn to tell the movement that the object has done. All right, you pause the screen or pause the video, work on that, then unpause, and we'll go over the answers. Okay, let's look at number one. If you look, the ending position is, is exactly the same as the starting position. So it is a slide. Okay. Number two is a turn because you can see this top part of the triangle with the dot has been turned that way. Number three is a flip because you're now looking at the back of the circle. And number four is also a flip. All right. 
Number five is turn because the arrow turned. The toast or the jelly sandwich, the jelly bread has been flipped over, it's flip. Number seven is a turn. Well, how can we tell the difference between a turn and a flip? Well, because we still see everything on the top of this ice cream cone exactly the same as on both sides. Okay, it's exactly, it's just been turned, that's all. All right, and number eight, all they did was slide it across. All right, very good. Okay, so that's sliding, flipping, and turning. And now we're going to review area. Okay, and remember what perimeter is. Okay, let's just review that. Perimeter is the distance around an object. So let's say that this is five inches across and two inches deep. Okay, so then this because it's a rectangle, we know it's the same across, like the sides are the same. So it would be two over here and five over here across from each other. And then you just add them together. It would be two plus five plus two plus five. And that would be 14. Okay, but we're not doing perimeter. I just wanted to show you that perimeter is the distance around an object. Now what we're going to do is what's called area. Area is how much space is being taken up within the whole shape. Okay, that is area. And then what we would do is we would multiply one side, the length times the height. So it would be five times two. which is 10, in this case, inches, okay? All right, so let me just erase this so it doesn't get in the way. Let's read what it says. Mom is laying one foot carpet squares in the dining room. Okay, just so you know, each one of these squares is one foot, one square foot. Okay, so that, what it means whenever they say one square foot is that this foot is one, one foot that direction and one foot this direction. Okay, that's all that means. So that's, and it makes a square. Okay, so mom is laying one foot carpet squares in the dining room. The floor is 10 feet long, that's important, okay, and eight feet wide. What is the area of the floor? Okay, and then they give you a reminder over here, length times width. So let's go over to our grid and we're going to draw the floor of this dining room. So it says it is 10 feet long and eight feet wide. So that means the length is 10 feet. Okay, so let's start. Since I know it's gonna be starting here, I'm gonna start on this corner. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, so this dining room is 10 feet long. Ten feet long, okay. And then it says eight feet wide, so it's eight feet wide. Now I'm going to take a corner. Doesn't matter which one you choose to use. I'm just going to go with this one right here. I'm going to count up eight: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to put eight over here. Then I'm going to close it in. Okay. Now, why do you think I did that whenever they had the grid completely done? 
I didn't tell you that because I wanted you to figure out how many feet across and how many feet up it is to get that visual in your mind. Okay. And I didn't want you just to count the blocks. All right. So what is 10 times 8? Do you remember? It's 80. So 80 feet, 80 square feet, which is written like with a little two up here, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to write it in the sentence down here. The area of the floor is 80 square feet, and they have it written in words, square feet. All right, and that's all there is to it. It's just you take the length right here times the height, and that gives you the whole area. How many square feet are in that whole area? All right, let's take a look at the back. So, um, for the back, you're going to write similar or congruent, and if you look in the directions, the words are there to best describe the pair. Do you remember the difference between similar and congruent? Okay. Similar means it's close, but congruent means it's exactly equal. Now it can be changed in direction, but the size and the shape has to be exactly equal. So let's take a look at these boomerangs for number one. Uh, what do you think? Do you think those are similar or congruent? Well, they look to be exactly the same in size and shape. And I'm going to write congruent. Okay. Now I am going to do number two with you just because uh, we have two triangles. Are they exactly the same size and shape? Yes, they are. Even though the bottom one is a mirror image of the first one, it's still the exact same triangle in size and shape. So we are going to put congruent. Okay. You're going to do the rest, three and four. Now for five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, if you look at the directions, the words are there, you are going to write the words slide, flip, or turn to tell the movement. And remember, they give you the dot somewhere on there so that you can compare Otherwise, it would be hard to tell, especially like on circles. So looking here at number five on the left-hand side of the dotted line, look where the dot is on the circle. And then after the dotted line, look where the dot is on the circle. Do you think the circle, do you think that the, it was a slide, a flip, or a turn that happened? What do you think? If you said... Um, a slide you are right so then you're going to actually whoops you're going to write the word slide underneath the figures all right now you're going to figure out six seven eight nine and ten and then for the bottom you have a review um it looks like it's mixed so that's good practice for you. And then once you're finished with this, you need to take a picture of your work and upload it into the turn-in bin. And you have your homework page 259, I believe. Let me look here at my book. Yeah, 259. So you'll need to do that and turn that in as well. All right. Until next time.